Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notification. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch. United Nations has asked Nigerian government to immediately release Nambikano unconditionally and pay him adequate compensations for the arbitrary violation of his fundamental human rights. So it's also recommended that government officials responsible for the torture meted out uh, on I the IPOB leader be investigated and punished. How do you see the federal government responding to this? It's difficult to predict uh, how exactly they are going to respond. But um, of course, the government will try its best to defend itself, but it has to defend itself within the ambit of um, United Nations conventions. This whole problem emanated from the forceful um, arrests and the relocation of Nambi Kano from Kenya to Nigeria. There are internationally guaranteed rights that the UN um, working group that indicted the UN working group on uh, the detention, arbitrary detention, um, has indicted Nigeria and Kenya of ideally, ideally, if you want um to put someone on trial a fugitive who ran away from your country if you want to put him on trial and he's in another country it has go he has to go through an extradition uh, trial in this case there was no extradition trial um in place now they can't even really go through any form of extradition trial yet he was forcefully brought to Nigeria, uh, and in Nigeria now is facing trial uh, before a federal high court. As far as the the working group of the UN Human Rights Council is concerned, this was a gross violation of Nambi Kano's rights. As far as they are concerned, Nigeria and Kenya stand indicted uh, for the manner they brought now become uh, to the country. It violates international convention, violates international law to forcefully drag a man out of another country and bring him to uh, uh, his country to face trial in the manner in which uh, now the uh, was brought to Nigeria by force. So for this reason, Nigeria stands indicted. My own position is both Kenya and Nigeria are signatories to this convention. So they are morally obligated to comply because if you are not signatories to the convention, then uh, it's the, 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 whole, the content of the convention is not binding on you. But if you made up your mind that look, this is good for me and my, 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 my people, and you sign up to it, it is then incumbent on you to comply. The, the UN Human Rights Council itself is a product of the United Nations resolution. So it then means 
that as a country affiliated to the United Nations, we have to comply with these resolutions. And from the tone of this 16-page uh, report, it, it is clear that they mean business because the working group is asking Nigeria to get back to it within six months of receiving his, uh, this indictment, showing it how it is complying, showing the UN uh, agency how it is, the UN working group, how it is complying with the uh, directive handed over. It's also asking that Nigerian officials who are involved in the illegal arrest of Kano without him being subjected to an extradition trial should be punished. And they are interested in knowing every step of the way what we are doing to comply with his uh, uh, resolution. So, and it is saying that it will not stop at that, that it would uh, take further actions against Nigeria. Now, we don't know what actions um, could be taken against Nigeria. We don't know yet. Uh, there are all kinds of options open to them, but as I said earlier, if you are a signatory to a UN convention, a UN charter, then you are obligated, at least morally and sensibly, to comply with the content of that um, that UN convention or UN charter. This is where this has left us. As for the the when this when the working group on arbitrary detention so uh, under the UN Human Rights Council sent a query to Nigerian authorities and the Kenyan authorities. The Kenyans refused to answer, but the Nigerian officials answered. But the, the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention was not convinced by the explanations offered by the Nigerian authorities, especially on the, um, whether Kano has committed treason and so deter I mean, deserved the treatment that he got. They were not convinced at all. And it's, it's uh, not difficult to understand why they were not convinced. As far as they are concerned, based on international law, based on international convention, once you want somebody extradited to face trial in your country, you got to let that person go through an extradition trial. The courts of the land would then um, determine whether to release him or not. How would Nigerians feel if the Americans just stormed Abuja and grabbed uh, Abakiari, the um, highly decorated police officer who was accused of working hand in hand with some of the most notorious uh, um, advanced fee frosters in the world. One of those advanced fee frosters is a man from Nigeria who was said to have met Abakiari in Dubai. The Americans have their indictment in place, but they have not stormed our country to say they are going to uh, uh, forcibly um, abduct Abakiari and take him to the U.S. Uh, to face trial. I know the Americans have done that in the past, and when they did that, they were roundly condemned. I can't, as a person, condemn America for abducting Manuel Noriega, the former president of uh, um, Panama, and some of the other world leaders that they had taken uh, prisoner, and then um, say that my country did the right thing in the way it handled the kind of matter. Whatever is right, uh, whatever is wrong, is wrong. If the UN convention is that 
a person should undergo um, a traditional trial when the request is made for that person, then that should be the law. That, that should be the way people are taken out of another country to face trial um, uh, in the country where they are deemed to have infringed on, on, on the laws of the land. So we didn't do that in the case of Kano. We yeah. took him by force. We subjected him to inhumane conditions and brought him to Nigeria where he is now facing trial. What we did was against international laws. No matter what anyone feels, it was against international law, and that is why this indictment has come. And Nigeria must not take steps that will cause it to be treated as a pariah nation, that will cause some of our partners that we cherish to begin to see us as a lawless nation, as a nation that does not respect the uh, UN charters and uh, the UN conventions. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.